<laughs> oh, yeah. Leave you all. Very good. Good segue. Thank you. Well, it's one small step for man and potentially one giant leap for mankind. Yeah, scientists at NASA have found out how to extract oxygen from lunar soil. That's been dubbed a huge step towards humans living on the moon. Yes, following in on from last year's achievement of growing plants in lunar soil, the path is becoming is becoming to an inter No, to becoming. To becoming an interplanetary species comes ever closer. I see. It makes sense now. Uh, let's talk to our very own interplanetary friend, space and planetary scientist, Andy Loud. <laughs> Andy, good morning to you. Right, talk us through this, because what, what concerns me slightly is that NASA have done this not with actual lunar soil, but simulated lunar soil. So are we sure it's going to work? Good morning. Yes, it should be quite good. I mean, the, the process which is being used, the carbon thermal process, is used constantly on Earth anyway. <clears throat> it's a process we've been using uh, for many decades for different processes. And the idea was to test this process using a simulated lunar soil. We know exactly what, what's in the lunar soil or regolith because we've got samples brought back from the Apollo missions. So we know what, what its constituents are, mainly, mainly various metals. And the idea was to test this type of equipment out in a vacuum chamber to simulate the conditions on the surface of the moon uh, to see if you could actually extract oxygen from it. And it's a very exciting, I think it's a very exciting process, but I would. Um, <laughs> the idea is to heat, and what they did was heat a piece of the regolith, so it's molten. Uh, it's over 1,600 degrees using a laser. On the moon, what you would be using, you would be using a, a, a device to direct solar energy onto the, the regolith to melt it. So they're using a laser in this case. You then pass, in this case, methane over it. You get a reaction where the methane, uh, which is CH4, the carbon is separated and the hydrogen is separated. The carbon becomes solid and goes over the, the melt, and that causes a, a reaction which will actually release carbon monoxide. And then you take the oxygen from the carbon monoxide and then you store it. Uh, and the process they tried in the vacuum chamber was absolutely incredible. It worked very well indeed. Um, so it should work perfectly well on the surface of the moon with the right type, because uh, the regolith, we know what's constituents in the regolith. So it's a good process that we think can work quite well. And the actual physical test of a piece of kit should be going up next year or perhaps in 2025, where they'll physically do it on the surface of the moon anyway. But, and this, but... this is a big step because... I was, I was going to say, Andy, for, for this, because they're, they're looking at it, obviously, for, for you know, oxygen for us breathing when, when, when we're up there, but also oxygen mm. for fuel to, to send, because obviously if it spends, sends ships from the moon, it's much easier. They need much less fuel because they, obviously the, the, mm. the gravitational pull isn't as strong. But mm. how much is it actually deriving? Because you still talk about huge amounts of oxygen that would need to be generated. You are, and this process actually generates vast quantities of oxygen because it's a relatively simple chemical process. It, it, it's well known, well understood on the Earth. I mean, the first real paper on it, I think, was published about 1960, uh, and it's been used on the Earth anyway to, to do processes. So it's well understood. Interesting enough, it's a process that's used to remove carbon, interesting enough, from the atmosphere. So it, it has an interesting uh, way of, of retrieving carbon. Um, so, yes, and, and on the moon, within the soil of the moon, we've, we've we, we've actually got enough oxygen trapped in the soil which could su support 8 billion uh, population for about 100,000 years. So there is a lot of oxygen up there tied up in the soil, and this process gives you a lot of oxygen for the amount of energy that you actually put in because a lot of energy is coming from the sun anyway. So that means you, you're getting essentially free energy from the sun to actually kick off the process to make it work. So, yes, this is a very, very practical um, proposition, and that's why they're getting very excited about it because suddenly – they've got a system that will work to generate the oxygen that they need both, as you said, for breathing, but also for fuel. And Andy, the context of, of all of this is it's, it's all part of the planning, isn't it? All part of the build up to astronauts returning to the moon in 2025. Mm. Yes, it is, because you're going to have to have a base on the moon. I mean, that's the point for, for living there. And you can't keep bringing that oxygen with you. You've got to actually use the, the natural resources where you can. And this is what's making space science, I think, the most exciting of the sciences, because it's making everybody think of how we can actually use nature in a much better way. So we're, we're not sort of doing very strange things. We're actually utilising nature in itself in a more efficient and, and as, we, as they would say down here on Earth, in a green way. 
So it's a much more environmentally friendly way by simply yeah. utilizing nature itself. And this is a very good way of doing it. Um, because if you can have oxygen production, then you can have the population set. Not just, of course, for the moon, but of course, if you want to go to Mars, which would be more difficult because it's much further away, you need to be able to generate oxygen on the Mars. And, and of course, one, the, one of the landers on the surface of Mars has already tested out a small version of this to see if you could generate oxygen on the surface of Mars. And that experiment has proved to be successful. So yes, you can. So it looks like we do have a method now for generating the materials that we actually need. OK, Andy, pack your suitcase because we'll be off in a couple of years. Oh, yeah, Fing fingers crossed. Really good to see you this morning. Thanks very much indeed.